this is going to be <clears throat> a test as I mentioned earlier on I said I want to try um, a couple of possibilities should I make it with watercolor should I make this with color pencil um, so this is going to be just a test and see see how we can resolve this right so I transferred I transferred the drawing on the paper um, with pencil now I'm going to, we're going to go over it over the pencil with um, uh, this um, non water soluble color pencils right so a variety of um, uh, makers make um, watercolor so, uh, water soluble color pencil or watercolor uh, color pencil and um, non water soluble this is non water soluble because when i go over it i don't want to lose the the line the mark so i'm going to draw now over the um the pencil line right and um, i make them slightly more visible but also at the same time i uh, refine the the anatomical detail of my figure right so this I'm making it up. I don't have a, a flayed person in front of me, in front of me. But um, I was able to read uh, the um, deep muscles uh, in 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 the model in the um, in the pose. So now I can have an idea where these uh, muscular groups go. Right. All right. So. Um, if I draw this with, um, if I, uh, uh, let's say, finish this with color pencil, then what I want to do, I want to start thinking here in terms of the volumes, right? Here like this, the volume of the case here, but it's gonna be darker here. And uh, I'm going to block in the first layer uh, um, of uh, color pencil, not, not too dark. Um, and not too much detail, uh, just the main, just the main volume. But see, in here, what I'm thinking, and it's the same approach that I would use for watercolor. But you know, um, I want to think. Okay, this is a round form this way and this way, right? So if the light comes from here, this portion here is going to be dark, right? Darker, and as it turns, it's going to be. So I'm not going to have any. Well, very light areas in here, right? But as I move toward the light, then I'm going to have a little bit more of lighter area right here, and then the lightest area here. So I try to describe a, a turning form with the pencil, right? So um, same thing for the thigh, right? So this is this form here, right? this form here uh, is a taper, fusiform. form muscle right so um the light is gonna be here so this area here is gonna be the lightest right and uh <clears throat> enlarge it a little bit right uh gonna be the lightest here and then gradually it turns a little bit darker right excuse from shape so this now the leg the thigh turn this way imagine a cylinder right so don't look at don't try not to be distracted by the complexity of all these muscular forms think this is overall a cylindrical shape so the light will behave like uh on a cylinder but um a little bit more complicated than that right so but overall i can say that i can put a a darker area here right here all over here because the form turns this one turns too it's smaller but um it turns too, so this is going to be lighter, and this is going to be a little bit darker here, right? Makes sense. So now, as you can see, I'm not concerned with the detail now. I'm concerned with the overall um, three-dimensional aspect, the three-dimensional quality of the the muscle of the thigh or or the rib cage, right? So. Um, Rectus abdominis, right, curved like this. Therefore, if the light comes from here, <clears throat> so let's block in, <clears throat> let's block in the light here, right? The light comes from here, right? So we have an idea where the light is coming from, right? So this area is gonna be the lightest, right? And gradually this is a little bit less, um, a little bit darker, 
and then so on a little bit darker down here like this right <clears throat> so i want to follow that idea of a curved form without thinking of the fibers without thinking thinking of the tendinous segmentation be between the various portion of the rectus abdominis right So this also now is because this form C kind of start directly slightly more toward the light, right? And then it turn, it's going to be slightly lighter here and darker here, right? Slightly darker here and darker here. And so it's also here, right? And here, right? And then this is going to be lighter. See that, right? So... You know, there is time there is time for the the uh little details one thing you want to always do is keep keep your pencil sharp because uh, uh, that way you can really you can really uh, vary your your mark right from thin sharp outline to softer um areas right where you model the figure so once i have blocked in uh, this like this you know the, the these these main forms main volume like this I'm thinking, well, now maybe what I should do is I should try to see what happened with uh, watercolor layers, right? Putting watercolor layers on top of it. See if we can mix the two, right? It's just experimenting. So it's not just experimenting. It's also um, figuring out stuff, right? Before I get into the big work, figuring out where goes what, right? What color should I use? Um, and... Uh, if I practice, um, if I solve these, these, these problems, right, um, before I get into the, um, the final work, um, my, my, my drawing is going to be, my paint, my final work is going to be better, right? And it's going to be easier and there's less, there's fewer uh, mistakes that I might end up doing, right? So you see, you see what I'm saying? The 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 grain of the um, the grain of the pencil is still there. It's not dissolving. Um, the pencil is not dissolving as it would with uh, a water soluble pencil, right? So this way, w with the pencil, I also uh, block in, as I said before, the main volume right main volume and now with the with the watercolor i can kind of refine it a little bit um following pretty much the um the description of the volume that i have done in the previous stage right it's just a little bit easier to do it like this right so now see how i can I already th I thought before, right? Okay, this is lighter, and this is gonna be a little bit darker, and this is gonna be a little bit darker. But I need to, for this to to dry up, and then put another layer on top of it, right? This is an old method that I learned um, in Bologna, University of Bologna, um, when I was uh, um, studying to be a medical illustrator, and um, it's a very deliberate. Now everybody uses uh, digital digital, which is great, which is fine. But um, understanding how to paint uh, like this is, um, even if you're going to use uh, digital art, is uh, is an advantage because it makes you think in terms of um, uh, light and shadow in a way that you don't really do if you, if you paint uh, only digitally. Meaning, if you have a background in traditional uh, art, 
your digital paint is gonna be much better. Um, so it looks like it, it could be viable, right? Could be viable. So now what I'm doing, I'm, I'm blocking in um, maybe here, this area here. I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go with a darker red, like a cooler red right here and see if I can block in the shading, see the darker area here, the tie, the turns right here, gradually turn, and also the sartorius here, right? So I, I kind of um, define that turning of the form a little bit more clearly, right? more efficiently. This is, I think it's a number four, uh, Kolinsky Sable. I would advise you to to buy a couple of really good brushes like Kolinsky Sable is 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 probably the actually is the best material you can get. So Kolinsky is not a guy, right? It's not a person. Kolinsky is a little Martin that lives in Siberia, and um, I think the Russians have the monopoly on these um, uh, little animals, and it's very expensive, but it's it's incredibly. Um, it's incredibly uh, great material for for brushes, right? Okay, so um, see what I'm saying now. I was saying before, I, I'm going to darken this area here, right? Because uh, as the form turns, it's going to be from light to medium to dark right here, right? And um, I am privileging not the realistic effect, but the um, information, right? The information. That's why I don't really need the model at this point, because I can uh, um, make up make up stuff as I go, because uh, I have described the. I mean, it's not like I make up stuff, right? But I can uh, um, understand how these forms um, develop three-dimensionally, structurally, and therefore how they. Um, um, behave when the light hits them tonally, right? I'm going to behave tonally when the light light hits them. So it's the gluteus, right? Tensor fascia lata, gluteus medius, gluteus maximus. And then now here, I'm going to try to do it without the pencil base, just the watercolor right away, right here. I mean, the two work very well together in my experience, right? Um, the original method would be just to do what I did with the color pencil is to do it with uh, uh, graphite, but um, and then layer and layer and layer. But this is a variation we come up with. I like to do this with color pencil because the graphite will leave a dark um, background, right? And the color pencil doesn't. The color pencil really integrates itself beautifully with um, the layers of watercolor, right? So it um, that's how it's coming, right? So I think we're gonna go with this technique, mixed technique. So another thing you could do, you could also block in the watercolor and then layer, you go over it with the pencil, right? So probably I'm gonna do a mix, a hybrid version of, of this technique. Well, some watercolor, some uh, color pencil, right? And gradually develop it. And this is slightly more, um, I already tested this, it starts slightly more developed, right? Starting more developed. So it, like, it looks like a, a Nike or Nike, right? The victory, right? Um, so I encourage you to do, to practice every time you have to do a complex drawing, um, a complex painting, do a few sketches first, study your subject first, and uh, that will definitely increase your level of detail.